this is now the second video looking at CERDs in the bridge in between GCSE and A-level. We looked at the idea of a CERD um, and the fact that it's an irrational number or an imperfect square in the last tutorial. We looked at some of the very basics. What we're going to do in this tutorial is uh, move things on a little and just see where we go with it before going on to our final uh, problem with CERDs. Now let's look at some basics. In algebra, if you've got 2a plus 3a, then you have 5a. In thirds, or using thirds, if I've got 2 root a plus 3 root a, then I'm going to have 5 root a. Exactly the same. We're just treating this as a quantity. When we're adding or subtracting thirds, the thirds need to be common or like, but we can simply add them. And we can use some tools to manipulate this, and that's what we're going to look at um, shortly. We're going to look at multiplication, we're going to look at addition, we're going to look at subtraction. So let's have a, a look at the following. If I've got 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2, then all I've got is 5 root 2. I've just got 5 of them. In the same way, if I had 6 root 7 minus root 7, then I've got 5 root 7. And we'll look closer when we go on to this, but it's basic, it's basic um, use of simple algebra. So if you've got um, 6 root 2 plus 3 root uh, 7 plus 3 root 2, then we've got 9 root 2 plus 3 root 7. And we'll look at circumstances where that doesn't arise. But essentially, when you're adding or subtracting thirds, we end up with um, you adding the, the thirds as if they're A's and B's in algebra. There's no, great, there's no great shakes. What we'll start off with is some basics. When multiplying thirds, we looked last time and said that root A multiplied by root A is going to be giving me A. Okay, if we think about it, if we take the square root of 36 and multiply it by the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 36 is 6. So we're going to get 36. You're squaring the square root. Another way of looking at this is if you were looking at it as an index. a to the 1 half power, which is the square root, squared. Remember, we just multiply these two. 2 times half is 1. So that's something to focus on. There are a couple of ways we can look at this though. We've got root 6 times by root 3. And again, I'm using the dot for multiplication. We could go ahead and straight write this as root 18. Now, root 18, we can um, write as 3 root 2. If we think about root 18 under the uh, root, it's 3 times by 3 times by 2. Or root 3 times by root 3 times by root 2, which gives 3 root 2. Another way of looking at this was to have written this now as root 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by root 3. And you can look at it that way. Or you could look at it and split it up even further. Root 3 multiplied by root 2 multiplied by root 3. And you know that multiplied by that will give you 3 and then you've got your root 2. It's entirely up to you how you want to look at it, but you need to stay consistent. If you look at this one, we've got root 5 multiplied by root 5 multiplied by root 2. Root 10 is 2 times 5. Root 5 times by root 5 is 5 root 2. Okay. Or you could have gone the other way. You could have said, well, that is going to be root 50 multiplied underneath. And then prime factorising 50, we've got 2 times 25, or 2 times by 5 times by 5. I prefer this method, but it's entirely up to you. Let's look at this example. 5 root 6 multiplied by 4 root 3. 5 times by 4 is 20. So now what we've got is 20 root 6 times by root 3. You can now write this as 20 root 3, remember 6 is just 2 times 3, times by 2, times by 3. Root 3 times by 3 is 3, so we're going to have 60 root 2. 
loads of different ways you can look at that one. Let's look at a different version or a different example. Now, we can get we can look at this a couple of different ways. We can have 12 root 16, so 3 times by 4 is 12, and then we're going to have root 2 times by root 8. Now that automatically gives us root 16. Now root 16 is 4, 4 times by 12 is 48. We could have also written this as 2 root 2. Root 8 is 2 root 2 as we looked at last time. So we got uh, 4 root 2 multiplied by 6 root 2. Yet another different way of looking at it. So loads of different ways. So multiplication, and we will come on to division later. It has its own little section. Essentially, you try and simplify. If you've got the um, uh, values out front, 5 times by 2, root 10 times by root 2. 7 times by 3, 21. 2 times uh, root 2 times by root 12 or you can simplify this down I'm not putting any restrictions on it you just have to decide which you prefer but hopefully you've got some idea from there right the rules of addition and subtraction of thirds mean that we can only add or subtract like thirds again let's go back to algebra a plus 2a plus b um, is going to equal 3a plus b. These are like terms. They're common terms. This is not. We can combine the common ones, but we have to leave the uncommon one alone. Thirds are slightly different. Let's just start with the first one. I've got 1 root 2 plus 2 root 2. Even if you need to start to, to begin with and say a is equal to root 2 and do a substitution, we've got a plus 2a, which is going to equal 3a or 3 root 2, if you have to. We can't add these, but let's think about root 8. Root 8 is the same as root 2 times by root 2 times by root 2, so root 8 is actually 2 root 2. So when we're adding root 8 to root 2, what we're really doing is 2 root 2 plus root 2, which is going to equal 3 root 2. So there's lots that you can do in terms of manipulating these to get them where you want. The same goes for, um, for subtraction. So 3 root 5 minus 2 root 5 is just 1 root 5. In the same way, 3x minus 2x is just 1x. Let's look at this. 4 root 7 minus root 28. Automatically, we say, well, we can't add this in or subtract it. They're not like thirds. But let's pull 28 apart. 28, 2, 14, 2, 7. So we can see what we're going to get here is 2 root 7. Think about that, 2 times by 2 times by 7, or 2 root 7. So what we've got here is 4 root 7 minus 2 root 7. Out of interest, if you think what this is going to be, if we were putting this back inside, it would become 4 squared times by 7. So now we're just going to be left with 2 root 7. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Let's be let's think a bit more creatively about this one. I could write that as root 5 multiplied by root 100 minus 3 root 5. Automatically, the root of 100 is 10. 10 root 5 minus 3 root 5 is going to be 7 root 5. Um, that one's fairly straightforward. Root 12, we can write now as 2 root 3. Think about under that root, it's 2 times by 2 times by 3. So we can write that as 2 root 3 minus a root 3. It's just going to give us 1 root 3. In the same way, 2y minus 1y is just 1y. So you can manipulate these. Adding and subtracting, the thirds have to be like thirds, but you can bend the rules if you can make them look like each other. Okay. Now, let's just take a, a step back now x plus 2, x plus 3. Let's foil this or expand it. First outer, inner, last. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is going to be plus 3x. Inner 
plus 2x, and then the last plus 6. Tidying up, x squared plus 5x plus 6. This is foiling or expanding double brackets. First, outer, inner, last. You foil these or whatever you want to do. Um, I see people draw birds on this with beaks or something. Oh, I don't know what they are, but um, we just expand this out. There's no difference with thirds. In the same way, if we had, for example, um, 5x into uh, 2x minus 1, we would get 10x squared minus 5x. So let's look, back, look at that and apply it to our knowledge of thirds. What we've got here is the following. 1 times by 1 is 1. So let's just foil this. 1 plus root 2 and then 1 plus root 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times root 3 is plus root 3. 1 times by uh, root 2 is root 2. And then root 2 times by root 3 is going to be plus root 6. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6, root 6. That is as simplified, or sorry, it's as unsimplified as possible. We've expanded the brackets. We can't add these, they're not like certs. These are both prime numbers, and of course that's just 2 times 3 underneath. So we're just foiling them out. In the same way now, this gives quite a nice result. Root 3, 1 minus root 3. Root 3 times by 1 is root 3. Now remember what we had before. Root A times by root A is just going to be A. So root 3 times by negative root 3 is just going to be minus root 3. Or you could write it as minus root 9 and simplify it. But essentially this is where we get to. Okay. Let's see if we've got any on here. Um, if not, I'll write one out. Um, I'm just trying to spot one. Here's one. Perfect. Right, let's have a look at this. This next part gives rise to an important learning point with thirds. There's something called the conjugate. Now, when we do the difference of two squares, let's look at the following. If I said now x squared minus 25 and ask you to factor it, it would be x plus 5, x minus 5. This is the difference of two squares. When we multiply by the conjugate, we simply multiply by the same two values but alter their sign. If we look here, we've got um, a, a conjugate. And the reason this is important is when we come to rationalise in the next video, when we divide in fractions, this is hugely important. So let's now, um, and the reason being is that we can't have a third in the, the denominator, so we rationalise. Okay, These are irrational. When we rationalise, we make them rational. Funny enough, 4 times by 4 is 16, plus 4 root 5, minus 4 root 5. Now, root 5 times by root 5 is 5, and we're going to have negative 5. You can see that this creates what we call a difference of squares. Those two will disappear, so we're left with 16 minus 5, which is 11. So, if we had in the denominator of a fraction, 4 minus root 5, we'd multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of 4 plus root 5 to cancel that out. And we will look at that in the next video. Um, so let's do a couple of these. Um, and this is just binomial expansion with thirds. Um, that, this one looks quite nice. So we've got pi plus root pi. And then we've got pi minus root pi. So pi times pi is pi squared. Pi times by negative root pi, we could write as negative pi root pi. Um, it's going to get a bit silly, isn't it? Plus pi root pi. And then we're going to have minus pi. If you think about this, root pi times by root pi is just going to be pi, and it's going to be negative. So these ones cancel out. And just out of interest, we could have written this differently. What we've got is pi to the first power multiplied by pi to the half power. So we could have written this as pi to the 3 over 2. That's just for your own understanding. So what we've got now is pi squared minus pi. Take a common factor out, and then we're going to have pi minus 1. That works out quite nicely. You, uh, rarely you're going to see that, but it's kind of quite interesting. And in the same way, now, these ones, all we would do is double uh, expand them, um, and you would end up with 
2 plus root 3, 2 plus root 3, and you would just foil it as per usual. We'll have 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2 root 3, plus another 2 root 3, plus root 3 times 5 root 3, which is going to be plus 3. So we'd end up with 7, the 4 and the 3, plus 4 root 3. And there we go. So that's multiplying um, double brackets. So let's just recap what we've looked at. Um, we've looked, now let's go way back. We've looked at uh, multiplying thirds. If we have these, now we can either simplify and multiply, or we can combine under the root and simplify. When we're adding and subtracting, the thirds must be like thirds, but we can manipulate them. And then when we're expanding double brackets or single brackets, simply multiply through, remembering that root a times by root a is just um, a. And we use the conjugate. The conjugate is when we simply swap the signs to get rid of the third. Getting rid of the third in the denominator is hugely important, which we'll look at in the next video.